This is the first section of chapter two, which is centers of mass of plane figures. And this section is how we can find the center of mass of a set of particles on a straight line. So the first one we're just going to talk about is what is the center of mass? So the center of mass uh, is the point in a body or a system of bodies at which the whole mass may be considered as concentrated. Now we can find the center of mass by finding the distance of the average moment. So we're going to be using moments to help us find the center of mass. So find the distance of the average moment from the origin. Now the origin is just going to be the point at which we are taking moments from. So here's a very simple example just to illustrate that. So this is the point I'm going to be taking moments from the origin. And I've got two masses here, both the same at distances of four meters from the origin and six meters from the origin. Now you could reason from this diagram that the average moment would be five meters from the origin. That seems to make sense because both the masses are the same weights. So the average moment should be halfway in bet between the two. So how would we calculate that distance? So to do that, what we're going to do is calculate each moment. So we'll start with the one which is four meters away uh, and its mass, so we've got five G times by four so that's going to be this moment here and i'm going to add to it this moment here they're both going um clockwise so i will add 5g times by six now if i divide that by the total mass so that's going to be 5g plus 5g that will give me 20g plus 30g so that's going to be 50G divided by 5G plus 5G, which is 10G. The Gs cancel out and I get five. So that five is five meters. That's this average distance of the moments. Now this works um, even if the masses are different, uh, I can still use this calculation. So what I've done here is basically the sum of these moments divided by the total mass. So I found this distance, this average distance, which I'm calling X bar. So this basically represents the distance of the center of mass of the center of mass from the origin. And normally that's the point at which we're taking moments from. It may be different on different questions, but for this one, we'll take moments from the origin. So X bar represents that distance. In the example that we did, that, that the value of X bar was five. And what we're doing is we're finding the sum of all of the moments from the origin. So that's the sum of all of these moments here, mass times the distance of that mass from the origin. And we divide that by the sum of the masses and we did that in our example here five plus five and that gives us the sum of the masses there now i've been using the word masses i suppose i should have been using the word weight because these are weights here but you'll notice that the g's cancel out and they're always going to cancel out so we don't need to use g so actually when we do this calculation we can use the masses here we don't need the weights okay so this M can just be the mass. So we don't need to times it by G to work out the weight. And also notice this is very similar to how we find the mean, the sum of FX over the sum of F, X bar. It's a very similar thing. If you replace frequency with mass, you get uh, like the same type of equation. And that may be a way to help you remember what the equation is to help you find the center of mass. So we're gonna use masses here. Um, so we don't, need the weights so we don't need to multiply by g uh, since g will cancel out g will cancel out anyway so this is how we're going to work out the center of mass when we've got these masses all in a, a straight line so actually on my diagram here there would have been a mass of 5 kg here and at this point here, there would have been a mass of 5 kg. Um, and I just indicated the weights on there. Um, but practically, you don't need to do that. You can just 
put all of these weights on a, on a line like this. Example one, a system of three particles with masses two, five and three kg are placed along the x-axis at the points three zero, four zero and six zero respectively. Find the center of mass of the system. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start with a diagram. So since they're placed on the x-axis, I need to find x bar. And the way that I'm going to do that is to find the sum of each of these moments, the mass times its distance from O divided by the sum of the masses. So we'll start with the first moment, which is going to be uh, a mass of two and a distance of three. We add to that the second mass, dis uh, mass of five, distance of four, and the last mass is a mass of three at a distance of six. And we divide that by the sum of the masses. So two plus five plus three. So that gives me 44 divided by 10, which is 4.4. So that means that the center of mass X bar uh, is a distance of 4.4 now we haven't been given any units for this so just uh 4.4 uh, from o uh, and we could write that as a coordinate so this average moment is 4.40 and whenever you do these questions it's often useful to try and look at it and see does that sort of make sense in terms of the masses that I've got on the distances. So we're saying that the average moment is 4.4. It's got one, two, three, four. So round about here, it's hard to tell really, but you know, I would be suspicious if I've got a center of mass over this end or a center of mass over here. You know, we're, exp we're trying to get it to balance out in a way and round about this sort of situation close to the, the biggest mass sort of makes about sense. You know, we've got like a, maybe an equal um, amount of masses evil side of that center of mass. That's basically what the center of mass means. Example two, a system of n particles with masses m1, m2, all the way to mn are placed along the x-axis at points x10, x20, and so on up to xn0 respectively find the center of mass of the system. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do a diagram. And what I'll have is my origin here. And I'll put some of these masses on. And then I'll just do like a dotted line to say, right, there's going to be lots of other masses until I get to my very last mass here. So we know that if we're going to find our center of mass X bar, we're going to take each mass and multiply it by its distance from the center of mass. So we've got m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 and so on, all the way up to mn xn, all divided by the sum of all the masses, which is going to be x1 plus x2 plus x3, all the way up to xn. So we're going to use sigma notation to write this. And we're going to say for i equals 1 to n for this. So we have at the top the sum for i equals 1 to n of each of our masses, mi sub i times by n x sub i divided by the sum of all our masses, so from i equals 1 to n, and that will just be the sum of our masses, which will just be m sub i. And this is basically what we've been doing to find the center of mass, so just the x bar there. So you should now be able to do exercise 2a on page 38 of the textbook.